and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they all equal and one God, uh, not separate God, with all authority to judge the quick and the dead. They have all authority on earth and in heaven. It's important for us to remember, and then God created, let there be light, and the glorious light shone from God. We talked about that. Glorious for light, um, we see in Revelation 22, 5, God's light there. With God's light, there is no night. With God's light, there is no need for a candle or the light of the sun. With God's light, there is no end. And praise the Lord for that. This is Psalm 119, uh, 105. The, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. And there is always, there are always divisions. Um, all throughout the word of God, no matter where you come to, go to, where you find, um, there will always be a division from good and evil. Uh, we see it all the way from Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain sacrifice, Abel sacrifice a division. Um, there was a division from the garden, we'll talk about that later, dividing the perfect and then the unperfect servant, the unperfect child, the sinful one had to leave the perfect garden. And so we'll see that there is always, it seems to be a divider, and the divider comes when sin comes into the world. And there's many parallels there. Um, let there be light, the divider, uh, division of light and darkness. And we, you remember we talked about how if you are a light in this world, and you are a light, the darker the night, the brighter your light seems to be. If you were uh, to shut off all the lights, um, and then somebody turned on a regular flashlight, your eyes would be blinded and you would see the lights even when you close your eyes. Why? Because in that darkness, your pupils were wide open, sucking in all this light that it could find, and there wasn't any. And then there's a flash, and um, I know we've been in caves, and people take flash photography in a cave when they shut all the lights out. And it almost hurts, it's so bright. Is it because the light is brighter? No, the light's the same intensity. But because of the darkness, the light shines brighter. And so when we see our politicians in Washington that love the Lord, they really stand out because there's not many. And uh, we see that. We see that our world, um, we talked about that, the darkness of pornography. And we see that pornography, uh, Gross is more money than ABC, NBC, and CBS put together. And so we live in a dark time. And so that makes the light important. And it makes the light even that much more visible. We're evil, able to see it even that more readily. Uh, let there be light, the divider. And then um, the first day, we talked about that. God created. Um, time began. Now we're in lesson number three, when God speaks, and God created the second day. So let's go to verse number six through eight. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So we have a lot going on in just a couple verses here. The upper waters and the lower waters were separated. Um, the Hebrew word for firmament, firmament is rekai, and it means air spaces. Thus, the separation here is between the upper water and the lower water. Thus, the firmament was created. So what is the firmament? The firmament is the first heaven that we read of in Genesis uh, 2, 1. We say, um, let's look at that real quick. Uh, remember, that's an important verse because in, uh, I believe that the Bible tells us where uh, angels were created. I believe it's seen in verse number 1 of chapter number 2. Thus the heavens, plural, and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And so we see that we have this heaven, the firmament. 
And then we have space, and then we have heaven, the dwelling place of God, the dwelling place of the angels, the dwelling place that was the place of Lucifer until he was removed from heaven. Personally, I believe that God created all of heaven and the angels in the seven days of creation. And I, but I only get that from Genesis 2.1. That's really the only scripture that we can give to that belief. You say, well, I don't believe it. Okay, don't. But when you get to heaven, we'll both be right. Because we'll, we'll know the truth. Uh, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. The Lord also spoke of the birds of the air in Matthew 8, 20. And Jesus saith unto him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not, uh, not where to lay his head. And so we see the birds of the air. Where is the dwelling place of the bird? Well, we know uh, if you've ever been turkey hunting and they'll land in a tree and roost there. And uh, chickens will roost on a limb or in a coop. And birds will have their nest. Funny story about a bird. Oh, it was, it was a sad but funny story. I was getting ready to go hunting, and the little Tweety birds, that's what Tweety birds do, just in case you didn't know, they do this, come fluttering up into Steph's wreath, cute little sparrows or something. And the cats, we would put their little climbing post there so the cats could watch. And I always wanted to see that Tom and Jerry moment where Tom jumps and smacks into something, and it goes splat. I just want to see our cat jump into that glass and smash their facing. I know it's sadistic, but it would have been so funny, but they never did it. And so we'd watch these little birds. Remember, this is what they do. And they would fly in, and they'd tear her, her uh, wreath apart and build a nest in it. Isn't that sweet, Mrs. Sapp? You love nature. You're not going to love me in a minute. And they build a little nest. Oh, and they have little eggs. And I thought, little birds, little nest, big mess. Because birds do what birds do. And it goes all down your window. But they weren't making that big of a mess, so Steph wasn't unhappy. I was happy, still watching for the cats to splat against the window. I'm getting ready to go hunting. Get my boots on, get everything ready, strap up. And I go and I open the door and the bird comes to fly to get into the nest that's on the open door. And it comes face to face with me. I was getting ready to go turkey hunting. This is really small. And it goes, you know, comes in. I almost positive we went, you know, and it's what flew right past my head. Now I've got a bird in my house flying around. It's about four o'clock in the morning. Steph is asleep. All that's between her and all this chaos is that thin little door. And you don't want to see my wife when she's angry. And that's any time she wakes up. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No. <laughs> That bird's flopping, smacking walls. I'm feeling terrible. I'm like, oh, the poor little bird. And then I'm trying to shoo it out the door. You ever tried to shoo a bird out the door? It's ridiculous. And I'm trying to shoo it, and it hits a corner, and it kind of goes, oh, loses its balance, and boom! The cat's revenge. Feathers. <clears throat> Everywhere. Cat. With a big bird stuck in its mouth. Compared to the cat, it's a pretty good sized bird. And I go, here, kitty, kitty. And the cat takes off. <laughs> takes off running. Here I am, full camo, rubber boots, boom, 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 through the house at 4 o'clock in the morning. It runs into Grace's room. It's Grace's cat, jumps up on her bed. And literally, I think the bird, of course, it was going, oh, but the cat was smiling. I know it's crazy, but I, I'm just sure it was smiling. Grace is like, yeah, what's going on? 
Where's Princess on the bed? I said, don't look, sit still. And then Princess jumps down and <clears throat> there goes Jonah, right there in the middle of the floor. And poor Tweety Bird died. What's that have to do with anything? Birds should stick with staying in the air and not in my house. That's what they're built to do. So they have that first heaven. There's what we see. The clouds, the birds. This is the heaven that we see. This is where we find clouds, the vapor that condensates and precipitates. Now this is interesting. Monsoon rainfall drop. Uh, monsoon rainforest, that should be um, rainforest, drops up to 100 to 200 inches annually. Thus, we easily see how God separated the waters from the waters. We see that there was some type of a canopy. Uh, the waters up, and you think of 100 to 200 inches annually of water. And so God has put in this perfect uh, hydrological cycle. And it goes, uh, what student, young person, can tell me the three steps of the hydrological cycle? Come on, one of you, any of you. All right, go ahead, Noah. Evaporation, condensation, and pre precipitation. Got it. And so you got the three steps, evaporation and condensation makes your clouds, and then precipitation. I am really making a lot of motions with my hands tonight, but the precipitation and it comes down. 100 to 200 inches of monsoon rainfall in the rainforest um, can be seen annually. There's a lot of water um, in the uh, first heaven. He divided the firmament from the earth. Uh, the ice canopy is a theory that the firmament was situated under a dome of ice over the earth. Uh, this is a theory that's not clearly shown in scripture, but it is reasonable. It is very reasonable that that was the way it was due uh, to the fact that there was water above, yet it did not fall as rain. So uh, the canopy believed, which we know he separated the first heaven with water from the waters below. And we know that there wasn't rain till the days of Noah. So, how, how did the water stay up there? Well, obviously, the hand of God can do anything he wants to. It could be the voice of God, and it could have been just a big wet bubble, if God wanted it to be. Um, most people believe that that was a canopy of ice. A lot of interesting theories go with that, that when um, the ice, during uh, the great flood, that the ice fell. Now, remember, um, evolutionists say, well, the Bible's not right because the whole earth at one point was covered in water. What's that? I'm pretty sure that's what it says. The whole earth was covered and God separated the waters from the waters and made dry land. Now, wait a second. I, I, I think you don't know your Bible. You're trying to discredit something. But really what you're saying is the Bible's right again. And so we see that this canopy of ice. Some people will say um, that's where you find um, the mammoths and different things encapsulated in ice was because as the canopy fell, it fell on them. We can't know that for fact. We, we don't know that biblically. This is fact. This is fact. Everything else is theory and um, a guess, an idea, and a lot of those are very likely to be right, but we also need to stay with the Word of God and the truth of it so we can come up to a um, conclusion, but with that conclusion, we have to be careful that we're not concluding something that is um, erroneous or it's uh, opposite of what the Word of God says. And we also got to be careful that we're not adding to or taking away from the Word of God. We don't want to add to what God did and take away from His power and His presence. 
Because God can do what he wanted to do. We do know that he had water up there. He doesn't say he had ice up there. He says there's water. We can think there was ice and it totally makes sense. However, we don't want to take and say, well, it was an ice canopy and take away from the power of God. We, if he put a canopy up there, it was his omnipotence that held it there. If he didn't, he still, uh, it was still done by the power of God. It was good. It was good. So here we see that what God does is and always will be good. It'll be good. Boy, how wonderful this world was in the beginning. But yet we still look and how beautiful of a world God gave us. You ever watch a peacock? Aren't those amazing looking creatures? And they're just beautiful. In all the different colors. A chameleon. How a Gila monster doesn't go into diabetic coma? How is that? How does a Gila monster not go into a diabetic coma? The scientists still can't figure it out. They'd like to because they could have a cure for diabetes. They store fat in their tail. And they'll go a long time without eating. And scientists are trying to figure out how in the world do these things survive just on the fat in their tail. And then their tail gets skinny. It's, it's an amazing thing. The liver. Isn't the liver an amazing thing? I'm looking at our nurse. Isn't the liver amazing? It regenerates, right? Isn't it the liver that regenerates? You can give somebody a part of your liver and they can grow. It'll grow. Amazing what God created. We had a, a doctor from Kentucky. Uh, it's amazing. And, and Dr. Reichert would tell you that. He went up to Dr. Page. It was about what the size of a softball. The tumor on his neck. I mean, it was big enough you saw it. And Dr. Page had that big tumor on his neck. And he said, start juicing. And we'll shrink that tumor. So Brother Page did it until he just couldn't stand the carrots anymore. That's what he said. Can't stand to drink another carrot. <clears throat> but you know that thing got small as a uh, ping pong ball? Because he just kept drinking those juices and that's all only thing that he changed was he started drinking these juices and that whatever, that tumor or whatever shrank. So I was interested. I mean, I watched this happen. So this doctor came in and he said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. All you people with glasses on or contacts. I mean, you have glasses or contacts tonight. Shame on you, said the doctor. And I said, do tell why, how am I sinning? He said, God made your body to heal itself. If you would leave your glasses off, your eyes could fix themselves if you would eat right. Yes, sir. What about the people I kill with my car until I put my glasses back on? No. Now, I don't know that that's true or not. I'm going to wear my glasses because I can't see anything without them. However, God did make a wonderful body, didn't he? And you look at what God has made and the wonderful things that he has made. And... Uh, the beauty of creation. They're laid down like fucking Brother Brown. He said, well, John, sometimes I just go out, just make a pile of leaves out in the woods, and I just lay in them. Just stare at the, just stare at the leaves up above me, stare at the tops of the trees. Just look up there and stare. You know what? Just seeing the wonder of God's creation. God is, um, God created, not is, God created earth for his glory and designed it for mankind. It is wonderful to meditate on the fact that as God placed this world in existence, he was designing it for us. He was creating it for us. 
And there's more scripture with that. I don't want to get too far. The world created for his glory and designed for man was good and is good. God was deliberate in his creation. He named the seeds. He made vegetation that would produce seeds and reproduce after its own kind. This is a perfect balance in creation and shows consciousness, personality, um, and omnipotence of an infinite God. It's important that you understand those points because there are people who look at God as um, some way off spirit who is not um, touched by our afflictions, but he has personality, he has consciousness, he is omnipotent, and he is infinite. And he spoke it all into existence. As we continue. With these celestial bodies, we find that man would begin to navigate time and seasons. We see the importance of these celestial bodies as seen through the Levitical law. So we see that time and seasons begin to move because of God's creation, because of these celestial bodies that he has placed out there. And man begins to study these and realize that God had a purpose in every star that he put in space. Every one of them is exactly where he wants it will be there as, as exactly as long as he wants it to be there. They are held by his voice and by his power. So when you look into the sky, Brother Mark Bartlow loves looking at the stars, and he can tell you what star is which star is which. I went, got on the internet today, and I, I looked up something about the moon, and we'll get to that. And some it had a... <laughs> It had a, a website where you can buy real estate on the moon. You can buy that for me. I'm selling it for $5,000 an acre. Anybody interested? See me after church? Nobody owns the moon. Only God owns the moon. You know? And we won't get into the moon landing, but that's a topic for later discussion. We see the importance of celestial bodies as seen through Levitical law. And so we see times and seasons. Then God started making time periods in the Levitical law where you were to do certain things. So it was important for them to know the times and the seasons that they could be in the will of God. We also wonder, uh, see the wonder of the star which led the men to Christ, to the Christ child. Every creation that God created has a purpose. Now think about that. Every creation that God created has a purpose. Mrs. Shipley has a purpose. Dr. Riker has a purpose. Randy Sapp has a purpose. Emily Weldon has a purpose. Eli Duncan has a purpose. Our purpose is to reflect Christ's light. What if the stars did not shine? You ever been in the woods or somewhere and you got turned around and didn't have a compass and it was an overcast day and you couldn't see the couldn't see the sun, you couldn't find east or west. Brother Danko worked with a man one time, got out in a cornfield, got lost because he couldn't see the sun. What if the world looks to us to see the Son of God and we're not reflecting him? It's like the sun went out. It's like the sun, stars are no longer shining. They have a purpose but what if they didn't do their purpose? If the sun did not shine, the world would die. The world would die. 
to be lost. You see where I'm going? If we don't reflect the light of the Son of God, the world is going to be lost. It will die. I'm not worried about um, that Green New Deal in the 12 years and the world's going to end. No, I just want you to know something. The world will end when God ends it. And it's not going to be in 12 years. He's already told us in the book, read your book and you'll know the world's not going to end in 12 years. Now I think we should take care of the planet. The Bible teaches us to. We're to subdue the earth. Take care of it. But I want you to know, this earth will only end when God ends it. And so we look on, and the star led the men to Christ, and so we should lead uh, men to him as we reflect the light of his glorious gospel. Let's take some time to see what the Bible says about the celestial bodies. Almost finished. Um, he telleth uh, the number of the stars, he calleth them all by name. When I consider the heavens, um, the works of thy finger, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Oh, I love that. God, I look at, and my, my wife went to tears at the Creation Museum. I was asleep, carnal man that I am. And she's laying back in that, what's that thing called? Planetarium. She's laying back like this, and we're looking at these stars. <laughs> Someone, wait. When someone begins to talk like this, as we look at the stars and the celestial bodies, why don't you go to sleep? And I did. <laughs> I went fast asleep, and I had no one to blame but the soft talker and the stars. It was beautiful. And my wife began to look at all the celestial bodies and the tears began to rain down her eyes because she and her heart was being moved just like the psalmist was moved. Lord of all these things, and you're looking at me. What am I but dust put together? What would I be without the breath of life? What would I be without you? Father, what am I? But a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Oh God, all that I am is what you've made me. If I am anything, it is because I am your creation. And so I know I have a purpose. I know you have a plan for me. Because you made me, and it is good. Isn't that wonderful? When he made Howie, it is good. When he made Josh, it is good. We receive Christ, we begin to walk in his will. See, I, I wasn't anybody, I'm still nobody, but you know what, really I am, I'm a son of a king. The king of kings. I walk a little straighter, stand a little taller. Because my God is good. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 148, 3. Praise ye him, sun, moon, and stars, praise him, all ye stars of light. The pagans worship the moon, false god of Ur. Um, that was uh, Nana. Think about that. Of all things, Nana. I didn't know that, but I figured it out. N-A-N-N-A -N -N -A was the false god of Ur. So if your grandchildren call you Nana, I'm sorry. I didn't write this. Um, it's just what it is. Who was the false deity of that city? That's a, an interesting thing is how many countries of pagans and cities and cultures had sun and moon gods. Anybody other than me ever look that up? There are, I'd say, probably hundreds of sun and moon gods. Why? They know the power of the sun, but they don't know the creator of it. 
Uh, many religions worship these false gods as they have different names. In fact, it's still the same. They are a false god based on a true God's perfect creation. Uh, immediately after tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. God has power over all of his creation. The sun will light the sky as long as he permits it to. Now, we look at that and we say, is there a sun? Yes. Is there a moon? Yes. But God holds it all in space. He gives the sun light. He lets the moon reflect. Do they have purposes? Oh yeah, they definitely have purposes. And so do you. When God created the heavens. Yes. He created the firmament. He separated the waters. And he separated the waters here. It was dry ground. And we'll continue this study. But think about what God has created you for. Are you that shining light? Because there should be a lot of application there in your life. And that's what we're going to try on the 11th and 12th. Why are we doing this Christmas play? We just want to be a great big reflector up here on the hill that cannot be hid. Just reflect his light. Just reflect his light. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank